Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. And happy Friday. I hope you're going to join us this weekend for worship and celebration of who God is and how Jesus can change your life. Hey, uh, sometimes the Bible is really, really clear about what we're supposed to do and know and understand. And sometimes the Bible is confusing. And, and I just acknowledge that because today's text is both really clear and really confusing. So 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 18 through 22, Peter writes, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. Uh, first of all, that's one sentence. So Peter has a problem uh, knowing where to put punctuation. But uh, let me just share with you what's absolutely clear, and then let's talk about what's confusing. First of all, it is absolutely clear that Jesus was the one and only sacrifice for sin. He is the one who can save us from our sin, from death, from hell, and from judgment. Okay? He's paid the price. He was the one who put to death our sin and the body of the righteous for the unrighteous. Okay, that's clear. We know that. What's confusing? Well, he says that Jesus preached to the spirits in prison from Noah's day. Did that mean they got a chance to repent uh, after the fact? I really don't know. It just kind of alludes to that. It says that eight people were saved through the flood, and that corresponds to baptism. Well, we know Noah and his sons and their wives were saved in the ark. Uh, and how does that correspond to baptism? Because baptism doesn't save you. It is an outward declaration that you've already surrendered your life to Jesus, and Jesus saves us. So how do we understand this? Well, um, how were the eight people saved through the flood? Well, they trusted God. They had faith in God. God told them to build an ark, and they acted on that faith, and they built the ark. And then they didn't die in the flood because they believed God, and they got in the ark, and they shut up the door before there was ever any rain. So um, they acted on their faith in God. That's why they were saved through the flood. They weren't saved actually by the flood. They were saved by the ark in the flood. And that means that God wants us to trust Jesus, because after all, he's the one sacrifice for all sins. God wants you to act on faith. In following Jesus. In other words, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey me. So if you're acting on faith, you're doing what God's told you to do. It may not be as crazy as building an ark, but sometimes it seems crazy to forgive your enemies or to give generously or to serve people who don't care about you. And then God wants you to know that you won't die eternally in hell because you believe Jesus and surrendered to him. He paid the price for our sins. So uh, trust him and follow him. Now, you might be going, well, what about the preaching to the spirits in prison? Well, I really don't know because that's the only reference to that in all of Scripture. And, uh, and I'm not going to teach anything about it other than we don't know. If the people from Noah's day got a second chance, praise God. Uh, there's nothing in Scripture that says any of us do. In fact, Hebrews says it is appointed unto man once to die and then judgment, which is why people need Jesus, which is why you need Jesus, and why we're on mission to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. So I hope that's clear and not confusing, and I hope it blesses you. Have a great day.